more of the Muslim refugees. So you have to ask yourself, maybe they really wanted this to happen. Maybe they destroyed the Middle East to free up the Muslims to overrun Europe and America. Now, why would a woman like her want Muslims to overrun America? Why? Why does she not say, I want to bring in all the Christians who are being persecuted in the Middle East? I want to open the doors to all the Christians in the Middle East and Africa who are being killed. There's a genocide going on, according to the Union Against Christians. Why is she not talking about Christians? Why is she talking only about Muslim refugees? Now, it gets even worse if you want to see a conspiracy emerging. Here is Barry from Honolulu, the booming Barry. We'll call him Booming Barry today. And that is Booming Barry on religion now. Here's Booming Barry in clip five. Listen to this one. The United States has to step up and do its part. And when I hear folks say that, well, maybe we should just admit the Christians, but not the Muslims. When I hear political Ooh. leaders suggesting that there would be a religious test. Why not? For which person who's should fleeing one from for you. a war-torn country is admitted. When some of those folks themselves come from families who benefited from protection when they were fleeing political persecution, look at that's the shameful. And oranges. That's not American. Who are you to say that's what's not American? Who we are. We How don't do you know what we religious are. Religious tests to our compassion. Yes, we do, moron. Yes, we do, moron. I keep hearing the same lie, the same homily over and over again. That's not American. What do you mean not so yet? Survival is American. It's ingrained in our very DNA, Barry. Survival is our number one value, Barry. Not liberalism. Your failed, corrupt, broken philosophy has blown up in your face and you refuse to acknowledge it. Barry, you're a laughing stock to the world. The whole world is laughing at you. The world knows you're a weak pacifist who has Nothing but contempt for your own nation and your own people. The world knows this now. Two hours and 15 minutes I've been trying to awaken you. Now here's the problem. Those of you who know will always know, and those of you who don't will never. There is no changing the mind of those who would dance before the golden idol. There is no way to ever change them. They will not change. I got an email from somebody who said... Michael, you're basically wasting your time. Those of us who listen to you every day have understood for years what you've been saying on Borders, Language, and Culture. Those of us who've bought Government Zero and try to give it to people to read for Thanksgiving, we're trying, but we know they won't listen. They'll look at us with uh, sort of detached amusement. Their minds are made up. They're closed-minded. The American mind closed a long time ago because of the brainwashing of progressivism. It's destroyed the minds of an entire generation. And they go on to say, Michael, there's only one thing that will, that will turn this around. And it's a terrible thing to admit. They say that only when 10,000 Americans are killed in one day by one, one day by one act of terror will the country ever throw these psychopaths out of office and take the country back and save themselves before there's nothing left to save. The dance of death. The dance of death goes on while the Caesar in the White House parties on behind closed doors as if the Islamo-fascist hand will not touch him. He thinks he's protected from this new plague, the black death of radical Islam. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. If you were educated before rap music took over the campuses, that's George Bizet. Toria Doors from Carmen Suite Number 1. Of course, now that music is considered dead, you know, dead white European males, and we have much better music right now. Much more important music, much more important literature, much more important philosophy, much more important uh, mathematics and science, as you well know, than we had in those primitive days when the dreaded white males, literature, science, poetry, art, uh, was prevalent on the campuses. We have a far better civilization now, don't we? A civilization that can defend itself, 
a civilization that knows how to survive, a civilization that knows who to let in and who to keep out. Yes, we've certainly evolved as a society, haven't we? Can you imagine if Obama had been president in 1939? Can you imagine how he keeps repeating the same mantra over and over again with his bleeding heart for Muslims, with his refusal to acknowledge what ISIS itself defines itself as? It's called the Islamic State, IS. I'm not doing this to attack Muslims. ISIS, Islamic State, they're fundamentalist Muslims. They want to drag us back to the 7th century, something that Islam evolved out of over a period of time. Now, you know, this is an interesting show unto itself, which is how is it that Islam could go backwards to that state? How is it that a group of Muslims could have taken it back to the 7th century when it had evolved beyond that? How is it possible that a, that a religion that had evolved to a much higher standard of civilization can be devolved back to the 7th century in our time. How did that happen? Well, it's Saudi Arabian money, number one. It's the Wahhabi sect of Islam that did it, number two. Uh, you don't understand how deep this goes into Saudi Arabia, but I do. It's all discussed in Government Zero, yes. My master plan, my master analysis and my master plan for what is happening, what will happen, and how to stop it before it's too late. But nevertheless, this didn't come out of a vacuum. It comes out of a, it's a pro, it's a process of the Wahhabi sect of Islam combined with the degeneracy and weakness of the West. Does that work for you as a one, one sentence paragraph? Combined with the degeneracy and weakness of the West. As I walked through the white suburban mall on Saturday, I told you, I try to imagine what this looked like to a radical Islamist. Make believe I'm writing a new novel. And this is the Islamist walking around looking at America. He's been slipped in as a student. He shaved his beard. He changed his name to Smith. And he's walking around looking at white America. And he goes to a mall on a Saturday. And what does Mr. Islamist see? He sees a white father with a, four, a 12 or 14-year-old daughter walking around in, in pajamas and no shoes. And the father is on an iPhone. The father didn't have the dignity to tell his daughter not to wear pajamas out of the house. Because it would be upsetting to her to say to her, I'm sorry, honey, you can't wear pajamas in the street. I don't care if it's fashionable, you're not wearing pajamas in the street. That would might have broken the child down. She might have needed therapy. Now, this is the same child that goes to a college that tells her global warming is the greatest threat uh, to the survival of the world, tells her that all religions are equal. Uh, uh, go down the list. I, I don't have to re read a litany to you, okay, borders, language, culture. So what else does our friend from Bra Bra see in Brabingdang, those of you who know what Brabingdang is, he's walking around Brabingdang and he's looking. What else did he see? He sees Americans sitting in restaurants, eating, drinking. No one is having a political discussion. This is the day after the bombing in France. No one's talking politics. They would feel it's uh, impolite to be angry. They cannot show anger. They can only show anger at Republicans. They can only show anger at Republicans and homophobes, but they cannot show any anger towards a government that failed them once again, a government that fails them over and over and over again. They cannot talk about politics. It's not polite. Politics is pornography to the average white American. They do not discuss politics except to bash Republicans. And what else does this man see as he walks around Brabing Dang? He sees nothing. There's nothing there. He knows he can cut through it as a sharp knife through warm butter. He sees a weak nation. He doesn't know where the tough men are. He doesn't see any. They're not there. They're not in the white suburban mall for sure on a Saturday afternoon. Where are they? Well, they're in prison, or they're in the military, or they're in the police force. That's where they are. But he never sees them, because they're, they're behind the scenes. They're kept behind the scenes. And right now, he feels safe, because he knows that the police have been cowed by the most anti-police, anti-American president in history. Through every trick in the book that he learned as a young radical, he has now... He has now frightened the police into not taking proactive steps to stop acts of crime and acts of terror before they occur. And so the FBI itself is now cowed and cuckolded. The FBI has a thousand investigations going on against who? Irish grandmothers or Muslim, Muslim men and women who might hurt us. So you ask yourself, why don't they arrest them? Why don't they preemptively just drag them out by their filthy scarves and throw them into a holding tank? Put them into a holding tank before they kill us like they did in France. Can't do it because they're afraid of the ACLU. 
Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. It's a lyrical for what's really going on in the world, and it's a tragically sad day in, indeed when you have a man so empty of soul and mind in the form of the President of the United States saying the things he said today in Turkey were shameful, deliberately embarrassing to the United States and the world. So embarrassing, in fact, that the liberal reporters themselves sat in stunned shock at the things he was saying. And uh, there's only one way to change it, and that is to not impeach him because that will never happen. That won't happen. No, they have to have a hearing on the man's fitness to hold office. Five psychiatrists, ten, doesn't matter, nine. Make it like a grand jury. Uh, it's a Supreme Court. Nine, judge whether he's fit to hold office, because I believe he's not fit to hold office. I believe the things that he said today indicate he's not fit for office. He's living in another world, a dream world. Even the Muslims know that something has to be done. Muslims who are not fanatically insane know that something has to be done to stop them. And this lunatic says the opposite. He says, bring them in. Slamming the door on refugees would be a betrayal. We don't have religious tests to our compassion. He doesn't understand who they are. He won't even call them Islamic. This just came out and is shocking out of, uh, from Josh Meyer of NBC News. ISIS has help desk for terrorists staffed around the clock. NBC News has learned that ISIS is using a web-savvy new tactic to expand its global op operational footprint. A 24-hour jihadi help desk to help its foot soldiers spread its message worldwide, recruit followers, and launch more attacks on foreign soil. You know, this leads you to ask some questions that need to be asked. And they're, they're being asked right now behind the scenes. And this is a tough one for me because I'm in the First Amendment business, which is what are the limits of the First Amendment? Now, we all know we gave up our freedom at the airports because of the Muslim attackers on 9-11. We know that. We know that. We gave up many of our freedoms. We became prisoners in our own country because of them. And in that, in that sense, they, they defeated us. So before we go down the road of asking, should Twitter be banned? I'll ask, should Twitter be banned? Should any of the means of communication being used by them be put out of business? Now, I realize that if they, if you ban Twitter, you couldn't talk about your lipstick or where were you going to meet your girlfriend for dinner. I understand that would be a great stress for you. But since most of these social media accounts are useless, they're nothing but gossip sites, if they are endangering us, why shouldn't we consider closing them down in a time of war? Uh, you know, pretty strange things happen in a time of war. People are interned. Remember that happened to the Japanese in World War II? Irrespective of whether you agree or disagree, that's not the point. It happened. And it was a liberal progressive president who in turn the Japanese, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Wasn't a racist, wasn't a fascist. It was a liberal Democrat. He interned the, he interned the Japanese into uh, camps for reasons that I won't go into right now. They, they were his reasons, not mine. So strange things happen in a time of war. There's censorship of the press during war did you know that you didn't know about any of that oh yeah you can't talk about your lipstick or your shoes you can't talk about where to get a good martini on on, on uh, internet uh, during times like that so there there probably will be a discussion very shortly and let me be the first to throw the pebble out into the calm pond of whether or not we should eliminate some of the social media sites that the terrorists are using to communicate and recruit with and plan operations i understand a sony playstation is being used well let me ask you something would society suffer if all Sony PlayStation devices were were banned? I, I'm asking the question. Tell me what would happen. I don't use Sony PlayStation, but I know many of you do. Would your life change for the worse if you couldn't use Sony PlayStation? Robert, do you use it? Yeah, I don't. Would your life change if, if it was eliminated? Would, would your life uh, end? Not terribly. Okay. So maybe it's possible to give up some of your freedoms such as the Sony PlayStation or Twitter in order to prevent these uh, evildoers from continuing their horrible acts of murder and mayhem? Or are you not willing to give that up? I don't know. You have to think about these things because it's going to happen one way or the other, as sure as I'm standing here. And it'll come at you when you least expect it. It'll come after the next terrorist attack in America, which could be catastrophic and it could come tomorrow. Do you think there's anything to stop them from striking here in America? 
Who? Who's going to stop them? Every intelligence agency in this country has been 